check and Synergy package update as of November 21st, 2020. I will make this promise to all my viewers out there and subscribers that I will never lie to you about the Simis problems that we're going to be having. And I will be upfront and honest with you because you guys deserve it. You guys are worth the complete honesty of everyone. In fact, I will never clickbait you. I will never put a thumbnail up that lies to you because that is just wrong. So basically, I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys because you guys deserve it and you're worth it. And today we have the University of Chicago has basically reported that we have over 1 million Americans that have hit the uh, poverty level, basically have gone below the poverty lines. And that was just in October alone. Steve Mnuchin also wants the Federal Reserve Bank to re return all the unspent money from the previous stimulus package, which is basically hundreds of billions of dollars. And so he can, they just basically want to repurpose it so they can actually give it to American families, or so they say. We know that we know the Republicans, they just want a skinny bill like usual. That's what, that's what uh, Mitch McConnell wants. He also says that he will work with the Democrats to come up with a bipartisan stimulus package that is more targeted to help out the Americans. The US reported over 2,000 fatalities on Thursday. And on Friday, there was 1,947 fatalities. And in the United States, we have currently over 12 million cases of COVID-19 and over 254,000 fatalities. California has implemented a, uh, a month long curfew due to COVID-19 uh, surges. So I am sorry to hear that for California about your, cur your curfew. I'm sure that's gonna happen everywhere. Um, there is currently hundreds of billions of dollars of unused stimulus check money, stimulus package money. Sorry about that. That is basically in the Federal Reserve Bank. Steve Mnuchin has basically asked the Federal Reserve Bank to give them back $138 billion of unspent paytech protection money, as well as the $455 billion of unspent money that was given to them for the lending programs from the, the previous uh, Stimulus package known as the CARES Act. To put this in perspective, if you add the $455 billion with $138 billion, that is enough money alone to provide two additional stimulus checks to every American that needs it. Because our last stimulus check program cost $300 billion. And Steve Mnuchin asked to the Federal Reserve to return the $455 billion so that they can help out the Americans. And Jerome Powell, Joan, Jerome Powell, sorry about that. <laughs> the Reserve, the Chairman of the Federal Reserve said that he don't think that's a good idea because that money serves as an important role to basically our, to our vulnerable economy as a backstop just in case. Now there's Jerome Powell is saying that the $455 billion that in the Federal Reserve Bank at this present time is going to be a backstop because he does not believe that the current politicians, this also includes the President of the United States, is going to actually pass a stimulus package anytime soon to help out businesses or the American people that need it most. And I hate to disagree with him, but I, the way that I'm, I've been finding out information is uh, Donald Trump is not really interested in any type of stimulus because he is more interested in his electoral votes. I mean, they've already completed up on the Georgia hand count of electoral votes, and I will give you information on that as well. Um, let's see here. The, uh, basically, he says it's just going to be a backstop or a vulnerable economy because we're going to need it. Like I said, I mean, we, do we really, I mean, if he actually returns the $455 billion and they add the $138 billion from the uh, PPP money, they can provide every American that deserves it with either a one check of $2,400 or two checks for $1,200. So actually, I'd like you guys' opinion on that one. Do you think they should return it and combine both those two uh, programs together to provide the Americans with a $1,200 check twice or a one-time $2,400 check. Please let me know on that one in my comments. I actually appreciate that. A study from the University of Chicago shows that over 7 million Americans 
have fallen below the poverty line since May. One million Americans entered the poverty line alone in October. If this trend is expected to continue as a new lockdowns and restrictions continue due to the COVID-19 running rampant. So basically they're expecting a lot more than 7 million Americans to fall below the poverty line as COVID-19 runs rampant through the United States and our politicians are sitting on their hands doing nothing. On record, there are currently 15 million unemployed Americans, but when it comes down to it, there are a, oh, a lot more than just 15 million uh, unemployed Americans because there's the ones out there that do not qualify for unemployment, as well as others that have not filed for unemployment because they're trying to because they're flying back on their past financial um, gains, such as their savings, borrowing money from their friends and family, and even those are running dry as well. If you have been at a, work, a job for long enough, you're considered to be not looking for work and you are not considered to be as <laughs> you are considered to be leaving the labor force. So you are not considered to be unemployed. So basically what they're saying is if you've been unemployed for let's say two months, they're telling you, they're saying that, you know what, you do not, you're not counted in the unemployment claims. So you don't, you don't, you're, you do not count to them at all. As more Americans fall into poverty, poverty, the politicians are busy playing the blame game. Kevin McCarthy, the leader of the Republicans in the House of Representatives, said basically that he blames Nancy Pelosi because uh, he's, he thinks that she's the back. She's basically the one thing that's stopping a stimulus package from going through. And then Chuck Schumer, the leader of the Democrats in the Senate says that the only one person who has refused to lift a finger on the COVID-19 relief, even refused to take part in the stimulus negotiations, was Senator McConnell. I hate to say this, but I I am sort of disappointed that he actually got reelected to Senate because, as we have known, he's always wanted a half, half a trillion dollar stimulus package, which will not help out the American people at all. It is more designed to help out the the businesses i mean he wants he, he wants to give out more ppp money which is a good thing he wants to give out more extended unemployment but at a lower rate and in a way i do agree with that and in another way i don't agree with that we have americans out there that really really need the money because they're losing their places to live they're starving and they need money for food and to survive but there's also other americans out there i will not name any of them but i know one of them he happens to be a family member of mine that he's been living off unemployment since this pandemic started, and he don't plan to ever go back to work at all. He'd rather live off unemployment for the rest of his life, and I do not agree with that philosophy. If if you can work, at least work. Go out there and apply for jobs and get a job so you can work, so this way your, your voice actually is counted, whereas these people that don't want to work and want to live off unemployment, their voices don't get counted at all. The hand recount in Georgia is now complete and basically confirmed that Joe Biden has a narrow lead over Donald Trump. In fact, um, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, um, Joe Biden's lead before that re the recount was 14,000 votes. And after the recount was done was 12,000. So he only lost like 2,000 votes after the recount. The leader of the House of Representatives and the Senate Got together, basically, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Mitch McConnell, and who's the other guy? You don't really hear about the other guy, Kevin McCarthy. All got together and decided not to piggyback the stimulus package on the back of the government's funding bill. I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not, because basically the American people actually need the help from their government, from their leaders, and currently our leaders are showing us that they don't care about us, they'd rather care about themselves and put money in their own pockets. Well, we starve, die, go homeless. But isn't that like the usual gist of all the rich people out there that have all this millions and millions of dollars that they don't care about the small people because we are just floor mats to walk on by them. And that's not right. And then despite the surge of COVID-19 cases, Joe Biden basically says that he will not impose a nationwide lockdown. 
which is actually a good thing because if he imposes a nationwide lockdown, that means that they would have to borrow a lot, a lot of money at a, from other countries to provide a stimulus package to, to pay these people. I think the Democrats are basically seeing that the more money they spend into the um, stimulus package at this present time, probably would and by d imposing a nationwide lockdown would probably be a bad idea because once the lockdown is over, people are going to have all this pent up emo uh, energy and aggression. And what's going to happen is the same thing that happened last time after lockdown got over. But like I said, this is, this is and always will be the people's stimulus check and stimulus package update as of, well, you know, November 21st, 2020. Until next time, you guys have a wonderful day, an excellent evening. Please stay safe. And remember, we're on this together because it's all we have is each other.